So continuing talking about the B cells. So here the helper cell, this is helper 2 cell, is now helping the B cell to proliferate and differentiate and grow and start releasing the immunoglobulins. Which B cells? Every B cell? No. Those B cells which are primed with the, with the pathogen. So now IL-4 and 5, as we just discussed, that does it, its work. On the other hand, the co-stimulation here is very important. The co-stimulation is that CD40 ligand connects with the CD40 from the B cell. Similarly, B7 from the B cell, B7, and I think there is there are two types, B7A and B. B7A is called CD80 and B7B is called CD86, I think so. So B7A and B connect with the CD28. These are the co-stimulations. Now here is one thing, this is very important from the question's point of view. Please don't, please don't forget this one. CD40 ligand and CD40 interaction and the CD28 ligand with the B7 interaction, they have separate functions. One of them activates the helper cell it becomes augmented, it does its function even more. The other one activates the B cell. So many times I see students they're saying, yeah, they, they both are co-stimulatory co proteins, they interact and that is how the interaction should be and all that. But what they uh, sometimes miss is that one of them activates the T cell and the other one activates the B cell. So here in this particular case, or in all cases, the CD40 and CD40 ligand interaction activates the B cell. So this activates B cell. So this activation is this way. However, the CD28 activates the T cell. So this activation is here. What does this mean? Is it important? Yes. Why is it important? Because once the T cell is activated, we want to stop it as well. We want to downregulate it as well. Do you want a T cell that has become active and is releasing interleukins to be like that forever? No. Why? Because the interleukins are going to continue acting on various other cells and activating them. And if we do not dampen it, the immune reaction would become, it would become a runaway immune reaction and that can cause damage to the body tissue. Because immune cells would then attack our body, they need some target to work on. So here, the activation is occurring. What would happen is, so now we are straddling two areas. I'm not going to go in depth for the B cells because that is a separate topic, how, how the immunoglobulins are formed, how they are released, how does the class switching occur. So just know this, that the helper cell is helping a B cell become active. And this response, the immunoglobulin released, Remember, immunoglobulins are not always attached in the surface of the B cell. This is just B cell taking it conveniently that, hey, I got an immunoglobulin which can attach to a pathogen, so why not I just stick it out on my surface and use it as a pathogen collector? But once it has become active, it is going to release immunoglobulin like little torpedoes into the bloodstream. So these are the IgMs, IgGs, IgA on the, on the surface of the uh, body, uh, you know, surfaces like mucosa and, and such, and then IgE that go and sit on the mast cell and become a problem for us for allergies. Remember, IgE for allergies, IgG and IgM are really important. IgM is a primary reaction, IgG is a secondary reaction. We'll talk about it later. But these are the uh, immunoglobulins, and please remember, all of them are not released together. My diagram here does not mean that all of them are going out together. At one time, only one type. IgM is the first one that is released. Then the IL-4 comes in, and IL-4 would convert it to IgG and IgA. That would cover the mucous membranes, and that would cover the secondary reaction. And then IgE would be the, um, sorry, IL-4 converts to IgM, IgG, and IgE. IL-5 for IgE. Oh, sorry, IgA. What am I doing? So IgA is IL5, IgG and IgE is IL4. Okay, so now we're good. Now, this is the activation of the B cell. This is the humoral response. And as we talked about it, this sometimes immune cell, the helper cell makes a mistake. 
instead of going down the humeral path, it goes down the, cyto the cellular path, or instead of going down the cellular path, it goes down the humeral path and does the wrong reaction. That wrong reaction can, can result in recurrent infections, or that wrong reaction can result in autoimmune diseases. So here, this is very important that the right path is chosen. Many of the USMLE questions are actually based on your understanding that do you know that which path should have been chosen? And based on that, did you know that this should be a cellular response or this should be a humoral response? And if you did not know it, you missed that part. So please remember this. Now, finally, in closing, the how does the immune system uh, become down-regulated. So remember we talked about it, we have effector functions and we have regulatory functions. So effector functions, let me just uh, name them. I, I, I think I tricked you that I taught all the functions and did not write them here. The effector function of immune system, cytotoxic T cell is an effector function. It actually kills the pathogen or pathogen infected cells. Then the macrophages through the helper when they become activated through interferon gamma, that is an effector function. Natural killer cell is an effector function. Eosinophils have an effector direct final reaction. So these are the effector functions. Regulatory functions are, as you saw, T helper 1 regulating the actions of the macrophage. That is regulation. T helper 1 helping the cytotoxic T cell become active and kill the other cells which are pathogen infected. That is regulation. T helper 2 helping this, the B cells to become active and proliferated and grow, grow and, and re releasing the immunoglobulins, performing the class switching, that is regulation. And the final kind of regulation is immune system dampening or down-regulating the immune system. We created an army that went and attacked the enemy. It has taken care of it. Now we need to take the guns back from them. Otherwise, they're going to attack whoever they can find. So what is what do we need to do? 